Hi everyone, good morning. Today we will talk about enabling haptic effects on consumer electronics. Hopefully, when this, when this lecture finished, you will be able to understand the different possibilities to enable haptic effects on consumer electronics. I will only focus on touch screen so you can think about your uh, smartphone, tablet, or like the screen of your smartwatches. And also you will be able to implement 3D rendering of shapes and textures with lateral force fields. Before diving into these topics, let's first remember what were the, what were the different types of tactile interfaces that you can find in research labs or in companies. So there are, we can kind of combine all the different kind of tactile interfaces into five types, variable surface, pin arrays, mid air and tool based. And in this lecture, I will only cover the surface haptic uh, displays, which are uh, the programmable displays that can deliver uh, tactile feeling on physical surfaces. And with surface haptics, you can make different kind of applications. For example, you can use it for online shopping, for education, teletouch, games, tactile user interfaces, data visualization, art appreciation, and aid for blind. For example, like for the next Zoom call with your partner, you, will, you may be able to touch the hand of your loved one, right? During an over Zoom call, or you can create much more immersive games, uh, or you can kind of display the different fabric of your of the clothes during online shopping these are all possible with surface haptics of course we are still the technology is not like on uh, it's not that well distributed yet but i believe that almost in five years we will use these applications in our tablets or uh, smartphones so surface haptics is kind of uh, similar to the word uh, which is called as Flatland by Edwin Abbott in his uh, book. So if you haven't read, read this book, I uh, completely recommend it. It's a kind of, uh, uh, in that book, uh, it's a 2D world and there are 2D shapes and suddenly there is a sphere comes and try to convince the other 2D shapes into a 3D world. So what surf septic does is all the things that all the effects you create is of course in 2D, but you kind of make the user believe that uh, you are uh, extending in a 3D world. So what kind of techniques you can use to enable haptic effects on touch segments? So uh, you can use to the haptics, electrical stimulation, thermal feedback, vibration, shape changing displays, electrostatic and ultrasonic waves. Today, I will mention, like I will briefly summarize all these different techniques, but then I will only focus on ultrasonic, electrostatic and pseudo haptics to generate uh, 3D shapes and textures on, the, on consumer electronics. So as you know, our perception of the world is interplay of senses, like uh, all like hearing, sight, touch, uh, all this information that comes from these senses are integrated together and we perceive the world. So the haptics is kind of a, a haptic collision that is like creating a haptic percept by using visual effects. So how can you do that? So this is an example from Costas et al. Uh, that let's say that you have a tablet and with this tablet, you have a cursor, like a visual image of a cursor at the point that you touch uh, to the touch screen. By changing this shape of this cursor, according to effect that you would like to create, you, uh, you can kind of, generate a different kind of haptic perception. For example, for the hardness softness feeling, you can uh, shrink the, uh, this, this cursor over time that will give a compressed effect. Or you can change the shape of this uh, cursor, just giving, uh, giving a kind of a sticky percept. 
or you can change the size of this cursor, like giving the kind of feeling that you are moving on a bump, for example. Or you can move the accelerate and decelerate this cursor, like creating a much more like a noise uh, effect to give a roughness perception. And actually, you can also try it yourself. So this is an app, Live Wallpaper Maker. It sounds like a very fake app, I know, but it just I found it during my scrolling Instagram Explore. It is not a pseudo haptics app. It is just a wallpaper app. But the the effects that they create is pseudo haptics, and I wanted to share it with you. So in the first uh, in the first video. And there is also sound, so it's uh, not only visual, but also like the, with a much more uh, rich effect. It is this is my just uh, smartphone, which is a hard, which has a like hard glass surface, but it feels like I'm touching a soft and sticky surface, and then also rough, right? Because when I move my finger, it it kind of gives a rough feeling, and also with the sound, you feel like okay, it's a rough and soft, and at the same time like sticky surface. This one, like you feel like you're touching the cat because <laughs> they change the cursor or like it, for this case, they don't have a cursor. So they have, they kind of blur, they kind of a, like a, um, they have a transparent cursor that changes depending on when you touch. And in this one, you feel like it's a rough and at the same time a much more fine surface, but it's a smooth surface. It's much more like soft again. You should try it yourself. I think this this is this was the first time that I believe that Suda haptics work. So I hope I could convince you. Uh, so the next thing that uh, the next kind of uh, effect that you can give is thermal stimulation. Generally, thermal cues are mostly neglected in the uh, haptics community, but I think it's very important because uh, actually there are research that uh, that shows by only uh, feeling the temperature of a surface, it's enough to discriminate different surfaces. So I think it's very important and hopefully in the future, we will see more devices that can give thermal stimulation. This is an example that shows the, uh, the possibility that maybe we can use it for the further, for the displays that we have. Here, what they do, they have a grid of uh, electro-resistive heating uh, sources and they, 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 uh, they control them with a closed loop uh, by uh, by a liquid cooling as well, so they can heat at the place that that they would like to give a higher temperature uh, input, and at the same time they can cool very quickly so that it can go to the normal steady state version, and uh, they overlay image with an overhead projector so that the different part of the surface can give different kind of temperature in, uh, temperature feedback. So this is a video from this paper. As you can see, there is a rocket that is going to be, uh, that is sent to the moon. And now they are uh, turning on the engines. And as you can see, this part of the video is very hot. Uh, and these parts are much more cooler because uh, the heat doesn't reach to that part. And you can feel like these are kind of the sky uh, and these parts are much more hard, uh, much more hot so that it can give you kind of more immersive feeling. So next type of stimulation is electrical stimulation. It's mostly called as also electrotactile stimulation in which that you directly give the, you directly send current input to the user's skin to, uh, stimulate the neurons that are connected to mechanoreceptors. As uh, uh, if you remember our previous lecture, uh, there are different kind of mechanoreceptors. Uh, uh, let's let's remember them: Pacinians, Merkels, and Meissners, and they uh, they are connected to different neurons. And by sending directly current, you can stimulate those. Uh, uh, neurons so that they will give you feeling that like vibration, tingling, and pressure depending on where you 
uh, which neuron that you stimulate. And uh, depending on how you, which electrodes that you uh, actuate and how you control their amplitude, you can create much more, you can activate much shallower regions and much deeper regions for the pachinos because all these uh, neurons are located in different depth of the skin. So by changing the region of stimulation, you can kind of uh, control which mechanoreceptor that you are activating. Another type of stimulation, uh, another type of uh, uh, haptic effect that you can create uh, on the uh, consumer electronics is shape changing displays. In these ones, uh, for example, in these two examples, they use electroactive polymers to change the uh, to, to, to change the geometry of the surface. So these electroactive polymers are kind of uh, compliant electrodes, uh, which are uh, squeezed between two, uh, uh, two dielectric films. And when you send voltage between them, they, uh, they, they change shape, they elongate uh, between the forces, the electrostatic forces between these two, uh, uh, between those these, uh, compliant electrodes. And by stacking of these, uh, by, by making much more stacks of these compliant electrodes, you can even create much more deeper uh, sensations, like uh, you can change the amplitude of this uh, spheres effect much more larger so that you can give much harder feeling or softer feeling. And this is a much, much bigger version, but you can also, by, by using uh, additive manufacturing, you can print them in much more smaller parts. And then you can even put them in like in a size of a uh, fingertip. Also, instead of using electroactive polymers, you can also use pneumatic uh, or liquid based actuators. For these ones, you need a pump, of course, and you need a, so in this case, there is a, oh, yeah. so, so there is a latex surface, which uh, on, on top and behind that, uh, under, under that there is a, uh, there is a vertical pad with chambers, which are activated with pneumatic surface, but at the same time, I mean, uh, with air. So depending on how much air you pump, it's a, uh, it will make these buttons much more harder and softer, and you can also you, you will directly. I mean, this is not exactly a two D world. It, you kind of create a three D world using this if by changing the shape of the surface, and instead of air, you can also use liquid as well. This is just an example. Another example that for the shape changing part is using. Uh, uh, pin arrays. Here in this one, there is there is a large pin arrays that individually actuated by uh, linear motors, and if you put a kind of surface on top of it, you can change how uh, change the shape of the surface, and you can create different kind of feelings on it. Of course, it looks very big, but of course, with the much more smaller actuators, you can squeeze this device in a much more smaller way. Uh, this is just an example how this uh, device can be used to uh, display various surfaces. Another type of uh, haptic effect, uh, ed another type of actuation you can use is vibration. I think this is one of the, the most common one. So the first time that vibration, like uh, uh, vibrat uh, vibration motor is used for a consumer electronic was around 2001 by Fukumoto and Sugimira. So they show that by placing an actuator on the device, you can create these transient feelings. Like when you touch a button, you can kind of give a vibration feedback to the user. So they feel that, okay, there's something going on there. And depending on where you put this actuator, the feeling that you generate might be different. For example, if you put the actuator close to the, in the bottom of the device, uh, the user will feel something happens when, uh, for the grasping. 
or you can put the actuator closer to the surface to directly uh, actuate the finger. Or this kind of thing, of course, you can by using multiple actuators, you can create a, a vibration feedback on much larger surfaces. Same idea, like in two, two years later, has been used by another group from Disney Research. Uh, sorry, not Disney, uh, Disney Research, by Sony to, to use this kind of vibration effect on, actually on Sony phones. And uh, what they propose is like, they make this actuator much more smaller so that it actually mostly vibrates the finger. And right now you see that kind of uh, vibration feedback in most of our phones or even for the MacBook Pad. So it's a similar kind of actuation method. So you can try it yourself.